Hello, good afternoon all, and uh, welcome to this Pearson-led session on uh, our appeals overview for uh, summer 2021. So my name's Connor Pritchett. I am the Assessment Customer First Manager for Pearson, uh, and I'll be helping helping today. Um, so just to, just to note, this is a GQ-led session, so this is just focused on general qualifications, um, and we'll be specifically honing in on our appeals process uh, for this year. Uh, and just to note, so this session is uh, recorded uh, and will be being uploaded to our Pearson Professional Development Academy after. Uh, just to note, this is the last in a series of live sessions we've hosted. Um, so we've had three previous in, previously in the last week, uh, and those are currently being uploaded to the uh, Pearson Professional Development Academy as well. Uh, joining us for today's session, we have um, Aileen, uh, who is our Head of Regulations for General Qualifications. We also have David, uh, who's our Head of Assessment Strategy for uh, General Qualifications. So uh, just, to, just to cover, in this session, we're going to be given a general overview of the 2021 Summer, summer Assessment Window. Uh, we'll also be given an overview of the appeals process for General Qualifications. And we'll also be having a, a Q&A section after where we have some pre-submitted questions we've received in uh, and also we'll be answering some of your questions live. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you now over to David, um, who's going to lead you through uh, the context of, of this year. Over to David. Thanks, Connor. Um, good afternoon uh, or good evening or perhaps good morning for some of you, uh, wherever you are joining us in, in the world today. Um, I'm just going to uh, give a general overview of the Summer 2021 series, just so that uh, we set the context. We're all on the same page um, for uh, what we're, we're aiming for this summer. Um, just a note, so if you do have any questions, please do put them into the Q&A um, chat and we will be going through and answering as many as we can um, that are appeals related um, today as well. And we'll draw on some of those for the Q&A section at the end. Um, but just again, the uh, this summer students will be receiving grades awarded and determined by teachers. Um, the pupils are only being assessed on what they've been taught. Uh, that is something that is slightly different from last year. Last year was the prediction of what um, they may have achieved um, were they to sit summer exams. This year is being assessed on what they have been taught. It's an evidence-based approach. Um, so it's designed uh, to be so that where uh, different uh, centres, different regions, different countries globally have been affected differently, uh, by the pandemic, uh, that it does allow for that flexibility in where uh, some parts of the specification may have been uh, not able to be to have been taught, uh, that they can still be assessed um, as well uh, in conjunction with some of the grade descriptors. And I'll, I'll just touch on some of that support later as well. There is no algorithm that is going to be used this year. Uh, there's no rank orders that have to be submitted um, to uh, awarding organisations. Uh, it is it's purely the teacher um, uh, grade determined by the teachers and the centres. Um, when determining those grades, uh, teachers are able to draw on a range of evidence um, to arrive at the grade. That could be the optional use of some of the assessment materials, um, the topic tests that have been released, past papers, um, sort of any other exam board uh, derived um, assessment. It could be previous mock exams. It could be coursework or other non-examined assessment or practical components um, for uh, PE or, or drama, art, etc. Um, and then it can be any other work that has been completed as part of a pupil's course. Um, so that could be essays, uh, it could be in-class tests, um, it could be uh, sort of other home learning as well, um, but it needs to, centres need to be confident that that is a fair reflection of the performance of an individual uh, learner and that it has been carried out in a, sort of a robust enough manner that it, it can be uh, independent learning as well. Um, we've got lots of um, guidance for teachers um, and centres on our website. Um, as Connor has mentioned, we've got some previous sessions that are recorded. We have got live sessions going on at a subject level at the moment as well um, that we do suggest all schools are interacting with. Um, 
and all uh, exam oh, sorry all grades need to be submitted to exam boards by the 18th of june slight change to results days this year for gcse um an a level other sort and other level two and level three uh, qualifications including some vocational qualifications and they will take place on the 10th and the 12th of august with the 10th of august being uh, the uh, gce so the a levels as levels international a levels and other level three qualifications coming first um, and on that talking about some of the timelines just some of the high level timelines that i think are worth drawing out uh, just to bring your attention to um, the 30th of april is the deadline for the center policies um, that is the the document that will tell awarding organizations uh, how a center is going to be approaching um, the uh, determination of grades this summer that can be submitted uh, via the center admin portal which is accessed via edxcel online the deadline for that is in two days time so um, hopefully you've got that document you've been working on it um, in your centers as well and it, it's ready to be submitted um, just on the right hand side there is uh, a little snippet of our website um, just where it shows where the timeline is so there is a helpful timeline uh, that's got the international and UK um, key dates side by side uh, on it. That's uh, just in recognition where we've got um, UK and international qualifications ongoing um, as well. Um, and then, as I said, the 10th and 12th of August are those key uh, results days. Um, mentioning the centre policy, uh, there are a few documents uh, that are absolutely crucial to make sure that you have read um, and understand before you uh, embark on the process this year. And I'm sure they will be important um, as uh, you work through any appeals processes as well. Um, but the JCQ and Pearson guidance documents are incredibly important. So on the Friday, the 26th of March, uh, the JCQ guidance on determining grades was released. Um, that is uh, an incredibly important document for every centre that is uh, deriving grades in the UK qualifications um, this year. Please do make sure that you've been to the JCQ website, that you, you have looked at that document, um, that you are interacting with it um, and that it is forming part of your centre policy. And also on the Thursday, the 1st of April, we uh, released our Pearson guidance on determining grades for international qualifications. Um, this is for our international GCSEs and our international A-levels. Um, it's very similar to the UK version as well, but it has just got some tweaks of where we recognise that our uh, international specifications uh, and assessments are slightly different, whether they be modular or for international GCSEs um, and A-levels being able to use some unseen assessment material as well. So it's just slightly different. But again, it's a very important document. Um, they are the main guides that centres need to follow as you're arriving at grades uh, this summer, as I've mentioned. And there are a few documents uh, that are downloadable from the JCQ website that we do recommend that you go um, and, and interact with as well. So you've got the editable centre policy, the assessment record sheet, the head of department checklist, um, and all of the UK grade descriptors as well are also available um, on there, and that is a joint um, JCQ approach to those grade descriptors. They are a very important document to interact with as well. Uh, on the grade descriptors, we have got uh, the grade descriptors for our international qualifications are available on uh, our Pearson website uh, now as well in the subject specific um, sections of the website. Uh, and just to sort of in appreciation that that JCQ guidance document is. Um, you know, roughly around 50 pages, we have tried to pull out the top 10 important things to note from uh, that document um, as well. And that is available on our website. And I've uh, mentioned some of the support already. And I think if you haven't uh, watched the uh, additional assessment materials and sort of assessment support materials uh, session that we ran yesterday or attended the grading sessions um, and QA sessions, centre policy sessions that we ran last week, I would um, definitely have a look at those um, as well. But in terms of support coming from us, uh, please do make sure that you're signed up for the uh, regular uh, Pearson Qualifications Bulletin. That goes out on uh, a fortnightly on a Wednesday. Uh, the next one is due to land in people's inboxes uh, within the next hour as well. 
Um, that's got some new information in it, so it's definitely worth uh, interacting with. And then on the alternate weeks, uh, we do have the exams office update that is uh, another channel for getting out some of those key uh, pieces of information. Um, we've also got uh, our dedicated support pages. So we've got the summer 2021 support page, um, which will link out to some of those key areas that you do need to get to, uh, whether that be the subject pages or whether that be um, through to the Pearson Professional Development Academy. Um, and I would guess many of you have interacted with those pages already, given that you are able to attend today. Um, you found our, our live session bookings area, um, but there are lots of general support um, pieces on the Professional Development Academy. And on the subject pages, I would wholeheartedly recommend that you do have a look at the subject specific information. Um, there are some helpful one-stop shop documents that for individual subjects and qualifications uh, will link to all of the uh, assessment materials, the examiner reports, the exemplification, all of those things uh, are definitely worth um, going to have a look at. And just on the right hand side, there is a, a screenshot of our um, 2021 support website. Hi there, sorry, I think uh, David might be having some technical issues, uh, but I know he was just on the, his, his, his very last sentence, so to speak, um, so maybe potentially fortunate timing. Um, but now we're going to pass over to Aileen, who's going to take you through uh, some uh, of the appeal slides. You. So over to you, Aileen. Thanks, Connor. Um, and hello to everybody that's taken time today to um, tune in for this. So. We're just going to take the next few minutes to um, look at um, some of 2021 GQ appeals. Um, so the overview of the session is the things I want to go through today are the two-stage appeals process for summer 2021, the grounds for appeal at each stage, um, and then just have a quick look at retention of information that may be helpful um, when we get to the point of, of having some appeals information that learners will probably find useful in helping them to decide whether to appeal or not. And then I've also just pulled together a number of other points that I hope you find useful. They didn't, they didn't seem to fit anywhere else, so I just grouped them all together at the end, but I hope it's a useful collection of points for you. Um, so with appeals for, for this coming summer, um, if a learner's not happy with their grade, they will be able to appeal. And of course, we hope that the vast majority of them will be happy with their grades, but it's important that there is a clear appeals process for those people that feel something may, may not have gone um, right. Um, and the, there will be a two-stage process. So the first stage will be managed by the centre and the second stage will then be managed by the awarding body. So with the first stage, this is what we're calling a centre review. Um, a learner who's not happy with their grade will be able to first ask their centre to check whether there's been an administrative or a procedural error. So if they think something's gone wrong in the process, um, you know, perhaps they were um, very confident in um, that the fact that they might get a, an A grade, for example, and they've, they've ended up with something other than that, um, they may want to have things double checked by their centre and they'll be able to do that through a centre review. Where a centre identifies an error in the grade um, through that review process, we will have um, a route through um, to the awarding body for you to submit that a revised grade um, and your supporting rationale just to explain to us what's gone wrong. Um, and we will be able to consider that. Um, and if we're satisfied with that rationale, we will be able to issue a revised grade. So there will be a route for you to correct any errors that you do identify um, through that centre review um, process. Of course, with some reviews, you may check things and, and come to the conclusion that actually there hasn't been an error in, in your opinion. Um, and the learner may, of course, be reassured by the checking and may decide to sort of stop at that point or they may ask you to um, make an appeal to the awarding body on their behalf. 
um, and that would take them through to um, stage two. It's just worth saying, I think, that they can stop at stage one, um, even if you don't find an error. They, they don't have to proceed through both stages of the appeals process unless they want to. Um, to move to stage one, they must have completed the centre review. So they can only come through to an awarding body appeal once the centre review phase has been completed. And we will be asking um, for confirmation that that's been completed um, as the appeals come through to us. Um, a centre is required to submit a learner's appeal to the awarding body um, and provide relevant information to um, support that appeal. Um, so that might be, um, for example, evidence on which the judgment of, the, of that learner's grade has been made. And we will issue some further information in the future to clarify for, for centres what sorts of information will be required for the different categories of, of appeal. Um, so that, that will be something that um, will be clearly laid out for centres just to, to help um, to make that um, easier to understand. Um, obviously, then, when we receive the appeal, we will consider it um, based on the grounds upon which it's made. Um, and that might be um, in terms of looking at whether the centre followed its process or whether the, the grade that has been awarded um, is an unreasonable exercise of academic judgment. And we will look at the grounds for appeal just after this slide. Um, and if we identify an issue, we will then take the appropriate steps to rectify that issue. So, for example, um, with an academic judgment appeal, um, if we decided that the original grade was unreasonable, we would then take the appropriate action to determine what the grade should have been um, in terms of the, the evidence for that candidate um, and the grade that that supports. So there will be um, you know, action taken where we do identify that something has gone wrong in relation to the determination of the grade for that candidate. Just moving on then, just to be, um, just to sort of clearly go through the grounds for appeal in summer 2021. So at, at stage one, at that centre review stage, um, the grounds for appeal will be um, that a centre has made an administrative error in relation to the result. Um, and we did see some of these last year in 2020 where, you know, unsurprisingly, you're dealing with, you know, a high volume of information and administrative errors um, can occur. Um, so that may be that somebody has, um, you know, typed in the wrong grade when they're submitting information to us or they've misunderstood which column the final grade to be submitted has been added into. Um, and they will they will all be things that you will want to sort of identify and correct. So there will definitely be a route through the appeals process for, for those. Um, the other grounds for appeal at stage one will be that the centre did not apply its procedure properly and consistently in arriving at the result. So this might be um, that the learner feels that the centre didn't follow its centre policy or there was a failure in internal quality assurance or it didn't take account of some access arrangements or mitigating circumstances um, such as learner illness around the time of, a, of an assessment that's been used um, within that grade determination process. So, so two grounds there really for a learner to um, ask the centre to review um, their case on. As we move through to stage two, um, so this is the awarding body appeal, um, the grounds for appeal will also be that the centre didn't apply its procedure properly um, and consistently. So just as in the, the point we've just been through on the previous slide, but this also at this stage includes um, that the centre hasn't conducted its centre review um, in line with its process. So. Uh, there is a sort of slightly extra element to the procedural appeal once it gets through to the awarding body stage. Um, they can also appeal to the awarding body um, on the basis that we've made an administrative error. Um, and that could be because we have incorrectly changed the grade during our processing of the grade. So um, 
you know, again, it's it's possible that the the tags that you provide to us um, could be in some way disrupted during the processing. Um, so again, it's important to make sure that there is a route to appeal in the, um, you know, in the rare circumstances, we hope that that would happen. Um, and then the other basis for an appeal um, to the awarding organisation is that the learner's result reflects an unreasonable exercise of academic judgment on the part of the centre. So this is where um, the learner will be able to say, I just don't agree that um, you know, the work that has been considered for me um, would, would have added up to or, or you know, um, come to um, a, a particular grade. And they can challenge that, that judgment. But it, it will be looked at on the basis of it being unreasonable. Um, so it's a holistic judgment um, that we will be making um, and we will be, you know, taking the appropriate action where we do have grounds to believe that the initial um, determination was unreasonable. Um, at stage two, so just wanted to expand on that final point about academic judgment, because the draft um, guidance that Ofqual has recently published for consultation clarifies that this is intended to include an unreasonable exercise of academic judgment in the selection of the evidence used to determine the grade and also in the determination of the grade from the evidence. So it's, it's sort of two-pronged really in terms of what's been selected as the basis for that decision and then that, that decision that's been made about the grade. So that is um, clarified in the draft guidance, which is currently out for consultation. Um, I just wanted then to touch on retention of information because we will need in the event of an appeal to um, have information provided by the centre when they submit the learner's appeal to us. So it is going to be important that um, information that's used within the centre is safely maintained and is accessible so that if an appeal does need to be submitted, the information can be um, gathered together quickly and provided to us um, so that we can consider it in the course of the appeal case. Um, so that will be evidence that's been used for, for example, evidence that's been used for determining the grades of the class or cohort, along with um, a rationale for what was selected. And also um, perhaps as well, records of any exceptional circumstances for that particular student. So if there have been approved access arrangements or reasonable adjustments that were in place, um, or perhaps they should have been in place, but they, they weren't in place, we would want to see the evidence of how they were taken into account when determining the grade um, or how any mitigating circumstances such as illness were taken into account. So that record um, retention and safe storage in, in a way that they can be sort of accessed should there be an appeal will be important. And um, I think the head of centre guidance that Ofqual published does say that um, following the publication of that on the 24th of March, any evidence that's been generated after that point should be retained. So um, that's a, an important document to reference to as well. Just in terms then as well of information for learners, um, they will, of course, need some information to help them to decide whether they want to appeal or not. And um, if centres haven't shared this um, information before results day, they will need to be prepared to do so on results day and, and moving forward if students request it. And things that are likely to be useful for students are the centre policy, um, the sources of evidence that have been used to determine their grade, along with any grades or marks associated with those pieces of evidence. And also where it's applicable for those candidates, details of any special circumstances that have been taken into account in determining their grades, such as you know, their access arrangements or mitigating circumstances. So 
providing this information or being prepared to provide it may well sort of give students the information they need to um, address the concerns or issues that they have. So they might they might not sort of then need to come forward with an appeal. So, for example, if they're um, if they're worried that um, special circumstances haven't been considered and the records show that they were known to the, the teacher who was making that grade determination um, and they have been taken into account in that um, final grade that's been allocated, then that may well just answer the, the student's um, concerns and they may not need to progress then to an appeal. Um, I've then just gathered together some other points just to um, clarify um, some of the other um, issues associated with appeals. So for any centres who are working with um, private candidates to support them um, and submit a grade for them um, this summer, the appeals process will be the same for private candidates. And we would expect that those centres would continue to work with any private candidates who um, may decide that they need to appeal. Um, the other point to mention is that appeals um, must not be submitted on behalf of a learner without that learner's consent. So consent will be really important um, to make sure that they are um, fully on board with an appeal being put in for, for their, their grade. And that's very closely associated with the next point, which is that um, there is a risk that a learner's result may be decreased following a, re a review or an appeal. So anybody that was um, involved in grading last year and submitting results and perhaps appeals is probably familiar that last year there was grade protection for appeals for, for general qualifications last year. That grade protection is, is not in place this year. So um, a learner does need to enter into an appeal um, being fully aware of the fact that their grade may go up, which is probably what they'll be hoping for. It may stay the same, but it may also be decreased following a review or an appeal. Um, also worth mentioning that centres won't have the discretion that they normally have about whether or not to conduct a review or submit an appeal. And we do know that in a in a normal year that um, centres do um, you know, look at appeals that people, that students want to bring forward, and they do make um, you know, judgments on whether to put those forward to the awarding body um, based on whether they feel that there is a solid case um, to be made. But that discretion won't be available this year, um, and learners will have much more of an automatic um, right to access the appeals um, routes and process. And of course, there will, as, as is usual, be an exams procedure review service available, and the regulators will publish details um, of that service on their own websites in due course. Um, and that is an important um, final sort of, um, point, of, of um, point for, for learners to go to if they remain unhappy having completed the appeals process. Just also wanted to mention that there will be a full JCQ appeals booklet and guide. So again, anybody who's um, used to dealing with appeals will, will probably um, know that there is always quite a comprehensive guide to how, how the appeals process will work. And that is being um, developed at the moment. We're in very sort of active development of that um, appeals booklet which will lay down a lot of detail and provide a lot of information and hopefully answer a lot of questions um, that people may have. And we are aiming to publish that in the next few weeks towards um, the, the sort of end of May. So that will be available as usual um, once it's, once it's finalised. Um, I have mentioned the off-call consultation on appeals guidance, which is currently open, and that remains open until the 5th of May. Um, please do respond to that um, if you've had the chance to um, look at that guidance and there's anything that you think could be improved in it. It would be great to have um, you know, responses to that. Pearson will obviously be putting in a response. 
Um, but if you do have the opportunity to look at that and you feel it could be strengthened or clarified, or there could be things added to it that would be helpful um, to your understanding and students' understanding of appeals, um, then please do feed that back to Ofqual. Um, and I, I know that they will welcome um, a healthy response rate to that consultation. Um, in terms of where there is um, some useful information at the moment, I just wanted to point out the um, general qualifications alternative awarding framework, um, which is a, a quite a lengthy title, but this is the um, publication which contains the regulatory requirements and the conditions that we as awarding bodies are working to this year. And GQAA4 is where the information about appeals is, um, is held. So if you do want to check the regulatory requirements that we will be complying with this year, that's a useful document for you. Um, also, we will be providing further information on appeals in the coming weeks. So I've mentioned the JCQ booklet, but there will be other, other information in terms of our website information um, and documents that will just help to hopefully fill in any, any gaps um, that are currently there. I know there's a lot of, um, there's probably a lot of questions and a lot of information that people want, but we are working hard to be able to issue further information um, to make sure that people have a really clear understanding of the routes to appeal um, and um, the basis for appeals in, in, the, in the coming summer. And I just wanted to finally say to any um, customers who are working in centres that also offer vocational qualifications, particularly um, VQs that might also be being awarded on the basis of teacher assess grades this year, um, that we are working again to um, look at how closely the appeals arrangements for those qualifications can align to the GQ um, route to appeal. Um, and we're just sense checking that they, they will be fully appropriate for the vocational uh, qualifications that they will relate to. So there will be more information in relation to vocational qualification routes to appeal in the coming weeks as well. And then just to finish off, I've just linked um, to some key documents there, which I've mentioned. So the JCQ guidance, the GQAA um, framework, which is the regulations, and the consultation on um, guidance, which Ofqual have issued. So they're linked there for, for anybody that wants to access those. And I'll move back now to, um, to David, who I think is going to kick off the um, Q&A session with some of the pre-submitted um, questions that we've had. Lovely. Thanks, Aileen. And I must at this point also offer an apology that my computer froze. And I think for some people, I just became a, a, a sticking head on the screen. Um, but just going through, uh, we've got some of the pre-submitted that we'll go through at this stage. And we have been going in um, and answering questions that are coming in as and when we can. And there's some definite key themes in there that we will pull out um, and we'll get um, Aileen's expertise on some of those. And I think some of the questions that are coming in might be things that are still to follow as the guidance um, comes out. But I will kick us off um, with the first question. So the first pre-submitted question was, will learners be able to appeal to the awarding body even if the centre does not believe that they have a strong case? Um, so in this instance, providing that uh, a learner has completed a centre review first, they will have the right to appeal to the awarding body if they choose to. Um, centres need to allow the learner to appeal um, and submit the appeal on their behalf. Uh, we, as an awarding body, will then ensure it's processed um, and investigated and we will send the outcome to the Centre for Onward Communication to the learner at that point. Aileen, over to you. Thank you. So the next question is really about um, what a centre should advise a learner to do if they're still not happy once they've completed an appeal with the awarding body. Um, and. This is really, um, I suppose, that links back to the point that I made about the exam procedure review service. So with 
the GQ qualifications, they are the qualifications that are in um, remit for, the, for that service. So um, a learner would be able to take a case to um, the EPRS, um, if they have reason to believe that the awarding body has not followed its procedures correctly. Um, and information about the EPRS will be published by each of the, the relevant regulators in the, in the UK. Um, so it will be accessible via their, their websites in due course. So that's the sort of um, next step if, if they remain um, unhappy with what's, been, what's happened with their appeal case. Um, once we've um, communicated the outcome of that via the centre. And back to you, David. Um, so David just has a technical issue, so I'm just stepping in. I'm just looking over some of our pre-submitted questions. Uh, and one of them is, uh, will there be a deadline for submitting appeals to the audit bodies? Uh, and the answer is, uh, so that's obviously something we're, we're looking into as part of the uh, development of the JCQ guidance, which is coming up. So uh, it will be clearly stated in that doc uh, when it's released in the next couple of weeks. Uh, sorry, unfortunately, we can't, we can't confirm that with you now today. Um, Great. Back over to you, Aileen. Thanks. So the, the next question is really trying to clarify um, what information can be shared with um, students um, before results are issued. Um, this is quite a, a long, multi-part question, but that's that's the sort of summary of it. So I think I think the key thing to say here that is that the appeals guide, the JCQ appeals guide that we're aiming to publish shortly will include a section um, on this um, subject in particular in terms of sharing information. And we will lay out quite clearly what should be shared um, and what must not be shared. Um, I think the point to be really clear about is that um, the off-call conditions and so the regulations are, are really clear that um, the final um, teacher assess grade must not be shared before results day. So um, the conditions do require awarding organisations to ensure that that's kept confidential by teachers and centres. So that that part is really um, the, the very clear part at the moment that what mustn't be shared is the teacher assessed grade um, before results day. Um, and in terms of other things that you um, can share um, and you may choose to share, the JCQ Appeals Guide will definitely lay out um, information on that to provide clarity. So back to you, Connor, or I'm not sure if David's back. Thanks. It's all right, I can take, I can take the next one. Um, so one of the questions we got in was, um, come on, quote, I understand that there's currently a consultation in place on the appeals process. Um, so when will, when will we start to find out some of the confirmed details uh, on the appeals process? Um, so that consultation is currently open with Ofcore, and it's it's due to close on the on the fifth of May. And so we will be responding as as one of the, the key stakeholders. And as Ailey mentioned before, do feel free to 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 access that via the Ofcore website. And um, and as as a key stakeholders yourself, you have a right to uh, enter in, into that and and give your give your give your thoughts. And um, so the, in terms of the timescales, so after that closes on the fifth. Um, Ofcore will be reviewing all the responses to that, uh, and there's no definite sort of date when it comes out. But we we expect um, uh, probably late, later by late May we may have a uh, listed outcomes for for that. But again, that's that's not not confirmed. Um, back over to you, Aileen. Yeah, so the final pre-submitted one that we have relates to fees and will centres or students have to pay for an appeal. Um, and this is um, something that is very live at the moment in terms of being um, worked on and considered um, in quite a lot of detail. Um, so as soon as we're able to provide a confirmed position on that, we will, of course, issue that to, to our centres and customers. Um, so can't confirm the arrangements in that area at the moment, but it's definitely being um, discussed and we, we will aim to get information on that to people as soon as possible. Excellent, thank you for that Aileen. Um, so I've been looking over the uh, pre-submitted as they've been 
been coming in um, and uh, fees was a, a sort of a big common question coming in, but I, I believe Aileen has just answered that. Um, and great, some great questions coming through. Um, one or two may have already been answered by, so I may just still ask them anyway, just, just so everyone is, is clear on that. Um, but another one that did come through was along the strand of um, how an appeal may affect other other um, candidates in a cohort. Um, so, Aileen, at this point, are, are we able to to confirm that? Um, is there any situation where an appeal may result in um, an outcome where other students within a cohort may experience a change in changing grades? So it. It is potentially possible that in considering an appeal, we do identify an issue that has led to other grades not being correct. And in those cases, we would need to consider um, the appropriate action for correcting grades um, and what was appropriate in that case. And Ofqual has pointed us towards their existing um, guidance um, on correcting grades um, for use in those situations. So it is possible um, and we would consider those cases on a case-by-case -case basis um, to make the appropriate decision on whether other grades did need to change or not. Brilliant. Thank you for that, a Aileen. Um, just to check, do we have David? Do we have you? Have you back? I am back, but I make no promises that I won't disappear. <laughs> unfortunately, with the way that my um, system seems to be going at the moment. Not a problem. Just checking. The joys from working working from home at the moment. Um, but okay. So uh, another another strand that was coming through is probably maybe potentially in two parts. It's about sort of sort of consent um, around appeals. Um, so, um, uh, Aileen, is, is, um, do teachers need the consent of students to, to sort of launch an appeal? And um, another sort of common question linked to that is, uh, I suppose, can parents um, start an appeal on behalf of, of their child? Um, so, learner consent um, will be required to start an appeal with uh, yes, because of that um, possibility of the grade going down. So it's it's really important that the learner um, has given their consent and is is informed of um, the potential impact on their grade. Because I think perhaps if anybody was um, aware of last year's situation, they may sort of just assume that that grade protection will be in place again. Um, so it's it's quite a different approach uh, this year as to last year um, in terms of that grade um, protection. Um, and I, I suppose in in terms of parents, um, they they will probably work with their um, their child um, or young person to um, request an appeal. So although it, it may be um, you, you know. I suppose the approach to the centre will probably be a dual approach with the, the parent and the, the learner coming forward saying they want um, a centre review and then possibly an awarding body appeal as well. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Aileen. Um, another common question coming through is, is probably one for me is it's just about the slides for, for today. Um, so we are hoping to make these available after via the Pearson Professional Development um, Academy. They'll be available for there for for you to access. Um, another another question that's quite um, specific is: uh, Will JTQ be generating appeals request forms for centres to use? So, in the development of the guidance, um, which is a very live project at the moment, we are looking at um, what sort of templates and forms we can provide um, to help centres. Um, and to just sort of try to ease the burden as much as possible. So there is sort of a, a list of information that we're currently sort of working to develop. Um, and I, I think some sort of um, application form for appeals um, coming through from learners is, is on that list, yeah. 
So a, a whole range of um, information and, and templates um, just to try and help as much as we can with centres setting up that, that process and running that process. And that, that will be um, part of the guidance that's coming out later in, into May um, in, the, in the appendices of that document. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Aileen. Um, we, we've just got two questions just around um, stage one. Um, if, if you could just maybe just quickly recap that. It's, uh, so what, uh, what is the process that we have to check that we followed for stage one? So um, it may be, um, let's just go back, stage one. So administrative errors are probably clear. So it may be the, um, the part of the centre policy where you've specified um, how you'll take into account things um, like special circumstances or mitigating circumstances. It may be another part of the centre policy where you've um, laid down um, how things will be signed off or checked. Um, so the learner might sort of flag up any issue related to that centre policy and say, you know, that's not been followed. I know that, um, you know, I know, for example, that um, the results weren't signed off by two teachers, for example, or um, my teacher was newly qualified and I don't think there was any sort of additional help provided to them or something like that. So anything within that centre policy where you've said how you'll approach things, um, they could possibly say, I don't think that's that's happened in my case and therefore um, I think that's affected my grade and made it the wrong grade for me. Brilliant, thank you for that Aileen. Um, another, another question, I'm not sure if we can confirm this, but um, so if, if sending work to the board, uh, if we're sending work to the awarding body as part of an appeal, uh, will it need to be sent electronically or by post? I, I, I suspect that is would probably be outlined in the upcoming guidance being released, Aileen. But would you be able to confirm or confirm that? Yes, they were. Um, we are for anybody that sort of submitted an appeal to us last year. You you've probably used our appeals portal, um, and we are redeveloping that to be suitable for appeals this year. And that will have the facility for information to be uploaded electronically. Um, if there are cases where information um, is only available um, in a non-electronic format, I'm sort of thinking of maybe some art projects or something, um, we would need to make um, provision for, for those types of information that couldn't be provided electronically in some way. So um, I think in most cases and most appeals, it will be electronic provision. Um, but if that does cause any difficulties along the way, then we will um, look at how we manage situations where that's not possible. OK, thank you, Aileen. I think we're nearly coming to the end, end of the questions. I think we, we've got a few common ones coming in, which I think we've we've, we've answered. Um, but one uh, that comes up is, uh, so who is responsible for writing the appeal slash rationale particularly? So uh, if I think the example given is if sort of the centre doesn't think there's a strong case, um, I think e.g. If, if, a, if a student such candidate writes this and sort of gives it to the centre, um, who is sort of acting as the submitter, um, is it still is it up to the student, I suppose, or is it up to the up to the um, centre itself? So the student will um, provide a rationale for their appeal, um, and although we don't want that to be overly burdensome burdensome to them or require them to have any sort of um, you know expert skills in how to submit an appeal um, it, they will need to, to sort of um, explain what they think has, has gone wrong and how they think that's impacted on their grade but we will only expect that to be in quite sort of um, simple terms really um, but they, they will be um, involved in um, developing that information and providing it so that the centre can um, forward that on to us through the appeals um, portal. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Aileen. Um, 
And another question is, so how long would we need to store evidence for? In, in terms of the evidence used as the basis of the, um, the grade? Yeah, actually, yeah. I think this might be one... Sorry, go on. I, I'm tempted to say until the appeals deadline has passed, um, but it may need to be beyond that because, of course, um, you know, sometimes cases come in a little bit later for a legitimate reason. So um, I think that's something that we possibly haven't addressed yet in our draft guidance. So I'm going to note that one just to um, make sure that we can give some information on that, either in that guidance or in an FAQ that will help people just to decide what that timescale might need to look like. Brilliant, thank you. And um, another question's coming is, um, so will, will appeals go to the exam board for the qualification or to the exam board that is our external quality assurer for all qualifications? Um, so they will come to the exam board that the entry's been made with, so the exam board for the qualification. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and uh, will there be a, a, a sort of a, a template appeals form that learners need to need to complete? Um, so, yeah, I mean, just again, we are looking at sort of what templates we can provide um, uh, just to, to sort of help and support centres. So I, I think that is on the list for um, development as part of the JCQ guidance um, development project. Brilliant. Thank you for that, uh, Aileen. And I think we we have come to the end of end of sort of our, our, our quest, questions. And um, if if people do want to submit any any more, we can um, we will um, wait for a bit just just so just to give everyone a chance to submit their questions in. We've just got one or two more just coming in. So um, I suppose it's uh, um, okay. So one's one one that's coming, um, uh, and it's it's I think to do with after results day. Um, do we have any ad advice of uh, of um, do sort of schools SLT um, do they need to attend uh, in that period during? Uh, all August to, to to deal with with appeals. So yeah, I mean that's that's probably quite a, a sensitive subject because I know that people will have been working hard all the way through um, the summer, but there will need to be there will need to be some provision to allow learners to appeal if if they feel they need to. So. There will need to be some sort of access to allow learners to submit appeals via centres. Okay, no problem. Thank you for that, Aileen. And then, uh, what what are the timescales for submitting appeals and for dealing with with appeals? Is there anything we can confirm confirm now? So that's all going to be laid down in quite a lot of detail in the JCQ guidance document that will come out in the next few weeks, and we have. Um, we have at the moment in the draft got some, um, you know, dates set out and and timelines, um, but I, I wouldn't want to sort of share those whilst they're in draft because there's always the possibility they might shift and change as different different people look at that and comment. Brilliant. And um, do we know is um, is GCC only non priority appeals? Um, so we are again looking at sort of priority appeal provision um, for um, A levels, um, but again details of that priority approach will be in that JCQ guidance document. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm just looking through some of, some of the other questions and.
Um, so just to confirm, this this session is is predominantly focusing in on appeals. We do have a previous session on uh, how to arrive at grades, uh, which is due to be uploaded to the the Pearson Professional Development Academy, um, which covers some of sort of the wider topics on on grade and how we are arriving at grades. Just reviewing some more questions. So, um, trying to just stick to appeals uh, because I think some have been answered previously in sessions. Um, I think we may have potentially come to the end of end of our sort of questions. If anyone does want to weigh in with any 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 more, uh, so one question has just come in: is what uh, turnaround are you expecting for appeals? How quickly will schools know your decision? Yeah. So um, sorry to keep sort of pointing back to that JCQ guidance document that will be issued, but that. That will um, clarify um, any sort of uh, service levels that we can provide um, in the summer. Brilliant, thank you, Eileen. Uh, um, I think we're, we're we've probably come to the come to the end. I think we have covered hopefully quite a broad range of 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 questions, and and we have covered quite a bit um, of the the appeals process. Uh, and I, I do hope you have found this found this session useful. Um, so just to just to confirm, as mentioned previously, so this session is recorded and will be up being uploaded to the uh, Pearson Professional Development Academy. Uh, and I'd just like to thank um, David and Aileen for for um, taking part in this session and answering your questions and delivering some of the wider wider aspects of this summer. Um, and yeah, I hope you found it useful, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. So take care. And if, if you uh, do need any support, do feel free to reach out to us via our, our support pages and we will be on hand to, to help you in whatever way we can. So uh, thank you for your time and um, we'll end the session there. Thank you. Thank you.